Hi, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about the rename method in pandas, which can be used to rename your columns or your rows. In pandas, lowercase column names with no spaces and underscores separating the words work best. So it's really common to need to rename the column labels. You can also use rename to update the labels of your row indices. So let's take a look at how it works in the Python pandas code. By the way, you can follow along with all of the code I'm about to show you on my GitHub page. So go ahead and load in pandas and alias that as pd. And I also wanted to let you know I'm working with pandas version 2.1.1. I'm going to need some data to work with for this video, so I'm reading in a CSV from a URL. If you'd like more information on how to do that, you can check out my read CSV video. Here's the top part of that data frame. You can see that we have some first names, last names, telephone numbers, and lifetime values for fictitious customers. So here's how rename works. You're going to be able to use it to rename the rows and columns of your pandas data frame. To do that, you'll need to pass in a mapper dictionary, and that dictionary should have the format old name to new name. So the old names that are currently in your data frame will be the keys of that mapper dictionary and the new names that you'd like to create should be the values of that dictionary. Let's see how it works. Just as a reminder, here's the top part of that data frame. And let's say that I would like to rename this first name column to something like first underscore name. So that's easier to work with. Right now it has a space and sometimes that's tricky to use in pandas. So you might've tried something like this, df.rename, and then pass in that mapper dictionary. So first name, to first underscore name. And maybe you've tried this before. If you go ahead and hit enter, you'll see that nothing happened. This first name is still there. And you may have thought, well, wow, this rename method really is not very good. Well, unfortunately we have an error right now. We need to let pandas know how it should use this map dictionary. We need to let it know to apply it to the columns instead of the rows. So there's two ways we can update this command in order to make it work. Firstly, we could specify to pandas that this mapper should be applied to the columns. Let's try that. And great, now we do see that update. First name has now been renamed in our column names. The other option is that we could say, hey pandas, you should apply this mapper dictionary to axis equals one. By default, this axis parameter would be applied to axis equals zero, which are the rows of your data frame. Since it can't find first name as a row label, it just does nothing. So if you add in axis equal one, you will see that update made first name is now first underscore name. So it's pretty common for nothing to happen or to receive an error whenever you're trying to rename columns. Be sure to either use the columns argument. Now that's my personal favorite because it's just so simple to remember exactly how everything works. The other option you have is you could pass in that axis equals one, and that will also do the job. The rename method is also very flexible. Instead of just renaming the columns of your data frame, you can also use it to rename the rows. So here's a look at that data frame one more time. Right now, each of our customers has an ID number, and that is the label for each row. But if we'd like to change that, we can absolutely do that with rename. So let's go ahead and try it. Let's say that we'd like to rename one of those rows. And in this case, um, the current label is 4576. That's going to be that first row. And we'd like to update that with the string 4576, and we'll just add the customer's name, Sophia. I would definitely not recommend doing this with your actual data. This is just for illustration purposes. OK, let's go ahead and try it and see how that works. And it does. This actually works. So if you remember the example I just showed you, we try to rename a column using this approach, and it didn't work. Well, that's because pandas is going to automatically apply your mapper to the rows instead of the columns. In this case, it did find a row numbered 4576, so it replaced that label with 4576 Sophia. So this did work. Now, even though we know that this command does work, I would definitely recommend being a little bit more explicit here. So the mapper does automatically apply to your index rows, but I would go ahead and specifically put in here that you are applying this to the index just to make your code that much clearer for other people to read. So index equals and then your mapper would also work within this rename method. So when renaming a row, you can explicitly use the index argument, or you can just rely on the fact that pandas is going to apply your mapper to axis equals zero by default if you don't also need to rename any columns. Ready to level up? 
Let's take a look at these options so that you can make permanent changes and you can raise errors if needed. In previous examples, we renamed the first name column as well as the ID number for our first customer. But those changes were not saved. And that's because whenever you use rename, you're actually just getting a copy of your data. If you'd like to go ahead and make those changes permanent, there are a couple different things you can do. First, let's say that we've got a rename that we like. We want to rename this column. Well, one thing we could do is just replace our current data frame with the renamed version. Now, if we take a look at DF, we will have that change in place and we'll see first underscore name. So that's one option for you. Another option is to make a change directly to the rename method. Within rename, you can activate this in place argument and set that equal to true. Now, when you execute this, you won't see a return object, but if you take a look at the top part of the data frame, you will see the change made. So in this case, we're actually changing the last name column to be last underscore name. So if you definitely wanna make your changes permanent, you can go ahead and add this in place argument in order to overwrite your current data frame. You can also use the rename method to rename multiple items at once. So here's the first few rows of our current data frame. The only permanent changes we've made are first name and last name. Let's go ahead and rename a few more things, a couple of the rows, as well as one of the columns. Once again, we're going to use the rename method. And now I'm gonna go ahead and give myself some space here. We're going to be working on the index and let's go ahead and do update a few of these rows. Let's say number, uh, let's see, four, five, six, seven. We're going to rename this as four, five, six, seven, Sophia. And let's also update the second row. So that's nine, four, eight, eight. And we'll update that as nine, four, eight, eight. Evelyn. And by the way, one thing just to point out, this is a little bit of a trick that sometimes people mess up on. The current labels for those rows are actually digits. They're not strings. So sometimes I'll see people try to rename things with strings. That is not the case here. These are actual uh, integer numbers. Those are numbers that were read in from the CSV, but if you use pandas default numbering, those will also be numbers, not strings. So if you want to find them with rename, you should not have quotation marks around the current values. I am replacing those with strings. That's why I have quotation marks around my string. Okay, so I'm gonna rename two of the rows and let's also rename a column while I'm at it. So this is a nice thing if you do have rows and columns you wanna update at the same time, you can do that with rename, just pass in the index equals and then columns equals with two different mappers. So in this case, let's go ahead and rename that last column, it's LTV. Let's rename that with its spelled out version here, lifetime value. Okay, so I do want to make this change, but uh, one tip here for you is go ahead and execute what this rename is gonna look like before you make the change permanent within place. So let's take a look at what that will look like. So I have my lifetime value column got updated and so did the ID numbers for Sophia and Evelyn. So I do like this change. Now I'm gonna go back up and update this to have the in place option. Okay, once I've set that to be true, I can take a look at the top part of the data frame and my changes have passed through. I've updated a couple of the row names as well as one of the columns. So if you do have multiple different items to update at the same time, you can absolutely do that with rename. Just pass all of your row updates to the index mapper and have a separate mapper for the columns. The final thing to tell you about rename is that there is this option called errors that can alert you to issues with your mapper. So here's my current data frame. And let's say I'd like to update the name of this final column. Right now it says phone. I'd like to update that to phone number. What happens if I pass in to rename this mapper? Phone becomes phone number and address becomes home address. So what do you think will happen? I clearly don't have an address column. What will rename do? Well, it turns out that by default, rename will just proceed like normal. It'll update my phone number column and it will just throw away that information that address becomes home address. If you'd like to catch issues like this in your mapper, if you'd like to have pandas alert you anytime that one of your keys is not present in the columns, you can do that by passing in one additional argument and it's called errors. So by default for rename, errors is set to ignore. In this case, we'd like errors to be set to raise, as in raise an issue if you can't find one of the keys that I'm passing in to my mapper. 
if we run that, it'll take a little bit of time and eventually we'll get an error. The error will tell me that address was not found in the axis that it was trying to find it. So this could be potentially useful or it could be potentially annoying. It just depends on your particular usage of rename. So thanks so much for joining me today to learn all about the rename method in Pandas. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a thumbs up and be sure that you're subscribed to my channel so that you can be alerted the next time I post about helpful Pandas tips. See you then. In Pandas, it's super common. In Pandas, it's super common to, it's super common. It's super common to re, <laughs>